Well, in Demo 8, we're going to re-demonstrate some of the things from Demo 6 and 7, add a few extra things while we're at it, but just looking at things in a different context. So hopefully that'll help you better understand some of the concepts that we looked at in the functions and the formulas. So first off, just a reminder, we're going to go up here to the A1 cell and center and merge, increase the size, change the font, change the height. So hopefully you remember these things as I as I do them. Size is too big for that font, so let's shrink it down a bit. Let's also look at the possibilities of text wrap. We haven't talked about that, but since it's too big for that area as a centered text, let's text wrap it. And so now we see that it's on two lines. So we're going to take the column titles, move those to the right. Remember, text always aligns itself to the left have to have the text aligned to the right, if, particularly if they're over numbers, which align themselves to the right. So we're going to create a sequence here uh, starting at 1990. I'm going to go down all the way down through my numbers. Notice in the preview it's showing 1990 all the way down. It copied 1990 all the way down. It didn't see this as a sequence. It just saw it as a number to be copied. But my option box here says fill the sequence. So I can fill the sequence and notice it goes to 2003 from 1990. Well we seem to have a problem with these two cells. The numbers are kind of odd in that way. So let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with these two cells as far as the numbers are concerned. What you want to do is select both cells, do the pull down, and pick number again. Now I know it said number up there already, but pick number again and watch what happens. When you pick number, it automatically puts the number into no commas and two decimal places. So this is a good number right there. That's a good number. We'll take the two decimal places out and we'll align it to the right. Well actually let's let's just add the comma to it automatically and take then we have to take out the two decimal places. The problem with this number is very slight. And the problem was I had hit the Space bar before I type the number in. So I hit the space bar, type the number, and it thought it was text by doing that. So you got to be very careful about your space bars and that sort of thing. Now sometimes you want a number to be thought of as text. For example, and let's say instead of January, you know, to June and July to December, these these two cells up here, I wanted January, you know, or I wanted 2010 and 2011. Well, I'd want those thought of as text. So putting a space in front of those numbers would be good because then when I did a total, it wouldn't include that 2010 in the total, which I wouldn't want anyway. So I've taken my space out of my number. Let's see what happens when I hit the Enter key. It's Notice two decimal places. Unfortunately, it's still centered, so we're going to have to move it to the right and take the two decimals out. Whoops. Add that comma back. Take the two decimals out. That's fixed. Another way of adding uh, numbers to cells and making them text is using an apostrophe. So if I do apostrophe 2010 
hit the enter key notice it stays over there but I get this little error error message that's what that little green triangle is again an error so you look at the error and say okay tell me what my error is numbers stored as text that's okay so I'm going to ignore that error if I wanted to do that well I'll clear that out I don't want that to be part of my spreadsheet here total remember what total is it's equal sum and in this case I'm only adding two cells so we'll just add the two cells so equal sign always start an equation with equal sign the first one plus the second one hit the enter we've got railroad tracks which means we have to widen the column use my pull down boom and there are my total numbers percentage change is another one of those equations that uh, we need to look at percentage change means what change occurred divided by where we started from so it's present amount minus previous amount divided by previous amount that sounds great and a little difficult but you'll get it it's a plus or minus situation so the equation in this particular case as I said is going to be the present amount now remember multiplying and dividing come before adding and subtracting so I want to subtract and then divide so I'm going to use parentheses to make sure that happens so the present amount is right here this amount right here the newest minus the previous amount which was the previous six months I'm gonna finish off that parentheses no, it kind of slips to the next cell it just looks that way throw in my divide and divide by the previous amount that B5 again so there is an example of that particular function formula to be used and here's the percentage change 21 percent we'll change these to uh, these decimal places once we've done them all so once you have the correct equation and you see in the formula bar present minus past divided by past gives me my answer it's what I want so now I can copy and paste that all the way down and remember the number changing that occurs the sixes turn to sevens, turns to eights, turns to nines, and so on and so forth. So now I can select all of these, change them to percent, use a quick percent style, and we'll add a couple of decimal points onto that just for the sake of it. Now let's say my boss comes in and he says, I want you to project an eight percent increase starting in 1991 for some reason he wants that so I'm going to put 8% up here in G2 I'm going to type in 8% and now we'll do the 8% increase of this total so what's our increase it's equal our present amount in this case since it's increase we'll add plus our present amount times the percentage increase in this case 8% which is G2 now if I'm going to use that G2 all the way down what do I have to do I have to change it to absolute cell reference hit the F4 to get those dollar signs there so there's the equation for increase the amount I have plus the amount I have times the percent hit the enter key take that all the way down to the bottom 
and change it to commas with no decimal places. So there we have our increases in that area. Now let's do two new things here. We're going to add some clip art to our spreadsheet here. And we're also going to do a show formulas view. Show formulas. So I want to add some clip art. That's insert. And I insert clip art. The clip art dialog comes up and I'm going to go look for airplane. Since this is about the airport, what do we got? Notice I'm including the office.com context, which means it's going off, um, off my site onto the internet. I need to have the internet. And I'm going to add that one and insert it. There it is. Rather large. But notice when I move it around, it's not like Word where it interferes with the text or the numbers that are already there. It has already been placed into that text wrap of tight or none. Actually, there's no text wrap. I can move it anywhere I want to. So I'm going to put it right up there and insert it into my into my spreadsheet. Another way of bringing graphics on is just finding your graphics that you want. Ooh, I like that one. And just double click. And double clicking brings it in. I like that one better. Let's get rid of this one. Click on it and delete. And we'll throw this one up there. You can add some formatting style to it if you want. Notice since it's already set up kind of in a shadowed format, we'll just leave it like that. So the second thing we want to look at is how do we show the formulas. There's two ways of showing the formulas. Through the ribbons you would use the formula tab right there, formula tab. And over here under formula auditing you have show formula. And notice the shortcut is a controlled accent mark. That's not the apostrophe, that's an accent. And the accent is above your tab key, right next to your number one. So control, accent mark, or right here under formula to show formulas. When I click on that, notice that my cell gets wider and that the columns get wider because they're showing all of the formulas that were used in this particular spreadsheet. So here's my totaling formula. Here's my percentage increase formula that happened between the first half of the year and the second half of the year. And here is my 8% increase formula that happened from the total to the 8% increase, what would it be? To get back to where you were, do the same thing, just kind of clap on, clap off, just click on show formula. Again, the control, accent, control, accent. That's how we do the show formulas.